गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द मेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम ओके सो टुडेस क्लास वी विल डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम सो जनरली द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम कंसिस्ट्स ऑफ इट कंसिस्ट्स ऑफ अ पेयर ऑफ ओवरीज पेयर ऑफ ओवरीज एंड अ पेयर ऑफ ओविडक्स ओविडक्स एंड अ यूटेरस यूटेरस एंड अ सर्विक्स एंड वेजाइना एंड लास्ट पार्ट इज द एक्सटर्नल जेनेटालिया एक्सटर्नल जेनेटालिया द मेनली फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम दस इज ऑफ ऑल दीज पार्ट फर्स्ट इज अ पेयर ऑफ ओवरीज सो दीज आर द ओवरीज पेयर ऑफ ओवरीज and a pair of oviducts you can see the tube like structure this is nothing but the oviduct oviduct or you can call this as fallopian tube also and a uterus a large central portion this portion is called as uterus and cervix the opening the opening of the uterus this portion so this portion is known as cervix cervix and the vagina this portion is known as vagina and external genital area will be outside morphology of the outside part is external genital area here somewhere here i have not drawn here That is external genital area. Okay, so these are this portion external genital area part. That part we are going to draw it a bit later. Okay, so these are various parts of the female reproductive system. Okay, female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries, one is on the left side, on on the on on is on the right side. Okay, a pair of ovaries, a pair of fallopian tube. oviducts and a uterus the uterine wall open or uterus opens in the cervix and the cervix and the final vagina will be here the external genital area will be outside okay so these are various parts of the female reproductive system so now we will try to study one by one okay the first one is ovaries So these ovaries are the primary sex organs. These are primary female sex organs. Okay, primary female sex organ. Generally, the ovaries produce two kinds of uh, cells or two kinds of uh, two things. First one is uh, it produces. produces the ovum first one is the ovum the second one is ovarian hormone or uh, steroid hormones steroid hormones also known as ovarian hormones or female sex organs such as estrogen okay ovarian hormones the pair of ovaries they are uh, ovaries are the primary female sex organ it generally produces two things one is ovum which undergoes fertilization ovum is nothing but egg and the second is steroid hormones or secondary or uh, or the ovarian hormones okay these are sex hormones generally produced by the ovaries so this ovary a pair of ovaries these are located one on either side of the lower abdomen so located 
located one on either side of the lower abdomen lower abdomen the length of the uh, ovary is generally 4 to 5 cm generally length is 4 to 5 cm In length, the length will be around 2 to 4 cm and it is connected, which means the ovaries are connected. It is connected, connected to the wall of pelvis, wall of pelvis, pelvis and uterus. With the help of width or of uterus by ligaments. I'll simply write by ligaments. Okay. So you can see the pair of ovaries which are uh, all are simply done. The female reproductive system is generally located at located on the pelvic region of the females. Pelvic region of the females, where the size of the ovary is 2 to 4 centimeter. Okay, which are located, the ovaries are located, what is here, what is there, okay. So, these two are located on one on either side of the lower abdomen, below the abdominal portion. So, these are located, one on each side, one is on the right side, one is on the left side. And, these you see the attachment, the ovaries, the, they are generally attached to the wall of the pelvis, with the back side portion, wall of the pelvis and uterus, with the help of ligaments these are the ligaments you can see okay these are ligaments with the help of ligaments they, these are attached to the wall of pelvis as well as, well as to the uterus with the help of ligaments okay so then the ovaries will take only the diagram of this ovary i will sir, draw somewhere here if you take the ovary, it is made up of a thin epithelium. The outside is thin epithelium. Thin epithelium. The wall of the pelvis is made up of the outside wall. The wall of the pelvis is made up of thin epithelial tissue or thin epithelium. And inside is, the inside portion is filled with the stroma. Or liquid portion. This stroma will be called ovarian stroma. Inside will be ovarian ovarian stroma. Okay. So this stroma, the ovarian stroma inside the fluid or inside the mass of cells or inside mass is called is divided into two zones. Okay. So we will just try to draw the two zones here. The, towards the periphery, a zone is there, towards the periphery, this zone we will call it as peripheral cortex, peripheral cortex, peripheral cortex and exactly inside inside is nothing but it is medulla medulla these two peripheral cortex and medulla both they both make up stroma this one so just show it like this they both make up stroma okay the wall of the uh, ovary is having a thin layer of tissue anything but epithelial tissue or epithelium is made up of epithelium so inside the epithelium it is filled with or enclosed with a stroma which is known as ovarian stroma okay so this ovarian stroma is divided into two zones one is outside towards the periphery that is 
peripheral cortex and exactly inside the uh, periphery, inside the central portion is known as medulla. These both peripheral cortex as well as medulla, they both together called as stroma, ovarian stroma. Okay. So then the next part is uh, this completes the pair of this completes ovaries. So next part. In fundibulum. 
Got it? So the edges of the infundibulum, the edge means this. So it has edges of the infundibulum has many finger-like projections called fimbriae. These are fimbriae. So here I will write edges of infundibulum. Infundibulum has many finger like projections. Finger like like projections. Projections called fimbriae. Fimbriae. Okay. So this this funnel shaped structure is known as infundibulum. The edge of the infundibulum has many finger like projections. So these are finger like projections known as fimbriae. Okay. So then this fimbriae help in. I will simply write here. Or uh, I will just continue the line. This fimbriae. Fimbriae here. I will continue this line. Okay. Fimbriae. Help in or help in receiving I'll use this marker Pinbriate receives receives over Ovum which is produced after ovulation. Ovum after ovulation. Generally what happens? Inside this ovary, ovum will be produced. That ovum is received or it, it, it is received by the help of this fimbriae. Generally this fimbriae, uh, they take the ovum from the ovary. Okay, they receive the ovum from the ovary. Okay, that process is known as the production of ohm from the ovary is known as ovulation. Okay, this fimbriae receives the ohm after ovulation. Then the infundibulum has uh, so th this part I will write over here. Okay, so this this is infundibulum. This portion. It opens, it leads to a wider opening called ampulla. Wider opening called ampulla. Okay. So this is infundibular portion. It is funnel shaped structure. So edges of the infundibular has many finger like projections known as fimbriae. And this uh, infundibulum leads to a wider opening. This portion. So you can see this portion is known as ampulla. Okay. So then after ampulla, after ampulla, a uh, narrow lumen, this lumen portion or this portion, lumen portion, is a narrow opening, narrow canal-like structure which is known as isthmus. I'll simply write over here isthmus. Isthmus. This portion, a narrow lumen or a canal like structure which is known as isthmus. Okay. So these are parts of a uh, accessory duct or fallopian tube. Okay. Then we we'll try to understand the next portion that is uterus. Okay. If I understood this now, accessory ducts, a pair of oviducts. Accessory ducts include a pair of oviducts that is fallopian tubes. Uterus and vagina. So this is a pair of fallopian tube or oviduct and uterus and vagina. These all constitute the accessory ducts portion. Okay. In that, the fallopian tube, this portion is having several parts. Okay. The end of the funnel shaped structure at the near to the ovary, which is known as uh, 
infundible okay infundible this portion is known as infundible infundible the edges of the infundible has many finger like structures which are known as fimbriate and this infundible has a wide opening here so that part is called as ampulla and this leads to a, a narrow lumen okay narrow lumen this lumen is just empty space so this lumen is known as isthmus okay these are parts of the uh, oviducts or accessory ducts okay now we will move into the next part that is uterus Now the third part is uterus. Okay, uterus is a single and uterus. This portion, the empty portion, whatever is inside this, the empty portion which we can see is called as uterus. It is also called as uh, womb. Oh, okay. Where the baby develops, here the area is the empty space in which the baby develops is known as womb. Womb that we call womb or uterus. Okay. So this uterus is the shape of the uterus is generally inverted pear shape. See, pear means a pear. Pear ka Indian name is there, pear. So pear ka ulta mandi thoda. Yaav thoda kaam thoda. Aathra empty space is there. Okay, so it is inverted pear shape. Uterus is inverted pear shape structure. Inverted pear shape structure attached attached to the pelvic wall. wall with the help of with the help of ligaments with the help of ligaments so this uterus is attached to the wall of a pelvis okay with the help of ligaments then uterus this portion is opens into a small opening called as cervix okay uterus opens into opens into a small opening small opening called as cervix okay this portion this is large empty portion is known as uterus and the small opening here you can see the cervix this portion okay it has small opening called as cervix so then the cervix the cervix canal the canal of the cervix of the cavity the cavity of the cervix so this is the cavity of the cervix cavity of the cervix is called cervical canal see cervical canal which leads to which leads to vagina which leads to vagina okay so all this uterus cervix and cervical canal this portion is a vagina all these structures make up birth canal uh cervical canal which leads to vagina all these canals or all these uh, canal system canals form birth canal birth canal which means 
So this is the uterus, which the uterus has a small opening called as cervix. The cavity of the cervix is known as uh, cervical canal, or cavity of the cervix is called as this portion is called as cervical canal. Cervical canal. All these cervical canal, uterus, and vagina. All these empty spaces they form a birth canal through which baby is delivered. Inside to peri 
millimeter perimetrium you will see a thick uh, uh, tissue made up of uh, smooth muscles thick tissue made up of smooth muscles this and this okay so that is known as myometrium okay it is made up of uh, uh, it is a densely packed with uh, smooth muscles okay so that 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 reason it is thick okay it is nothing but myometrium the innermost layer is having many finger like projections or glands okay these are many glands will be will be having many many types of glands okay so this glandular tissue makes the inner wall or inner lining of the uterine uterus inner lining of the uterus that is known as endometrium okay so these are three parts of the wall of the uterus here this endometrium portion whatever is this endometrium portion it changes its shape or it generally it changes uh, according to the menstrual cycle okay so that i will try to write here Clitoris, then hymen will also be here. I mean, these 
are the various parts of the external genitalia. Okay, which we will try to understand with the help of a diagram which shows all, I will try to draw the diagram which shows all these parts mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, and hymen. Okay, just give me a second, I will draw the diagram. Okay, now we have drawn, I have drawn the diagram of the external view of female reproductive part, female reproductive part. So it contains, now I will try to show you the various parts that, that are mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris and hymen. So the cushion like fatty tissue covered by skin, this portion, okay, this part where you can find the hairy like structures is known as mons pubis mons pubis ok this mons pubis is a cushion of right here cushion of fatty fatty tissue having having pubic hair pubic hair ok so that part the part here is it is having very smooth it is a very smooth part having fatty tissue inside it on the uh, skin you will find many hair like structures of uh, these hair like uh, hair, hairy structures so those are known as uh, pubic hairs so that portion is known as mons pubis ok mons pubis is nothing but cushion of fatty tissue having pubic hair. The next is, next portion is labia majora. The blue color portion is here. This portion is known as labia majora. Labia labia majora. So labia majora is a fleshy folds of tissue. This is a fleshy it means uh, uh, this, this is a fleshy part. Okay, fleshy folds of tissue, fleshy folds of tissue extends extends down extends down from mons pubis. So just below the part, this mons pubis part, below to it you will find the labia major extend down from uh, mons pubis ok so it is it is made up of fleshy folds of tissue extend down from mons pubis is known as labia majora and it generally surrounds the vaginal cavity or uh, generally surrounds mons pubis surrounds surrounds vaginal cavity Vaginal cavity is known as labia major. The outside outside part is mons pubis. Just below to it, below to it you will find labia major. It's a it is made up of fleshy tissue which surrounds the vagina. Is known as the labia major. And the next layer is labia minora. This portion, the red color portion. This red color portion is known as labia minora. Labia minora. And I will try to write all the parts. This is this portion is vagina, vaginal opening, vaginal opening, and this vaginal opening is covered partly with a membranous uh, tissue or a membrane which is known as hymen. This is hymen. Okay. And a finger like projection is over here. At ends the uh, at, at the joining of labia minor. At the joining of labia minor, you will like find the uh, finger like projection that is known as clitoris. Clitoris. Okay, these are various parts of the female external genitalia. Okay. So I will write right labia minor here. 
the labia minora are the paired folds paired folds below labia majora okay just below the labia majora you will find a red color region okay it's a folds of tissue folds of uh, paired folds of tissue folds tissue paired fold tissue below the labia majora below the labia majora you will find a red color a uh, tissue folds are but labia minora then at the junction of the two labia minora here one and this one is two the junction at the junction above the uterine above the uterine cavity or we will use that is called as clitoris the tiny finger like structure we will try to write here tiny or different color tiny finger like structure tiny finger like structure at the junction of at junction at the junction of labia minora labia minora okay it is known as clitoris you can see the finger like structure which is have made with the help of blue color okay finger like structure which is at the junction of the labia minora okay it is above the uh, uterine uterine urethral opening above the labia minora above the urethral opening opening urethral opening so this portion above the urethral opening a finger like structure is there that is known as clitoris then the last part is hymen hymen is a portion it is uh, uh, it is the covering or partially cover the vaginal portion okay hymen is membrane which partially covers membrane which partially covers the vaginal opening so that portion is known as this blue color portion which is covered which covers the vaginal opening partially that is known as hymen okay so now we will try to understand some more points with related to the hymen okay so these are the various parts of the external genitalia okay the external genitalia mainly having several parts first one is mons pubis uh, mons pubis is a uppermost part which is having hairy like structure that is cushion of fatty tissue having pubic hair that is known as uh, mons pubis just below the mons pubis you will find uh, labia majora which which surrounds the vaginal opening so this blue color portion so that is a fleshy folds of tissue extends down from the mons pubis surrounds the vaginal cavity is known as labia majora and just below the labia majora you will find labia minora that means a paired folds of uh, tissue below the labia majora below this is labia majora just below it you will find a red color uh, a paired uh, folds of tissue nothing but labia minora so at the junction of labia minora at the junction of labia minora or minora above the urethral cavity you will find a finger like structure that is known as clitoris c l i t o r s clitoris okay so clitoris is a tiny finger like structure at the junction of labia minora above the urethral opening then the last part is hymen it is a membrane which partially covers the vaginal opening vaginal opening that is membrane which partially covers the vaginal opening that is hymen okay now we will try to understand few more points which related to hymen okay i'll remove this
hind end. Generally, what happens? This hind end or a membrane, the sleeper, the uh, partial uh, membrane which covers the vaginal opening, generally it, it turns during hind end turns during coitus. Coitus or uh, it is also known as uh, intercourse. Intercourse. Generally, oh, this membrane I will draw a bit large diagram of the this vaginal cavity. Say for example, so this is a vaginal cavity. Cavity. So this will be covered partially by, say for example, this is a partial covering. Cow the partially covered by a membrane called as hymen. Right? Hymen. Generally, what happens? It talks during the coit uh, uh, during coitus or intercourse. Intercourse means uh, male reproductive part, male genital part or appendix when enters the vaginal cavity. Okay, when enters the vaginal cavity, what happens? This hymen ruptures or turns, which means cut everything. Okay, when male uh, male genital part or penis enters the vaginal cavity, so the hymen ruptures or turns, cut everything. So that 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 uh, portion that is known as uh, hymen rupture or uh, hymen turns during the coitus or intercourse so it did not only ruptures during the intercourse yeah you know male genital part was enter avasta cut avandala it has several uh, types of uh, turning okay the first one is not during coitus or intercourse or it can also turn during or it can also uh, be broken it can also be also be broken also be broken or ruptured also be ruptured ruptured during during uh, sudden fall sudden fall or jolt of the thing jolt say for example this uh, hymen only uh, sexual intercourse would have to cut the tongue it has several types of uh, rupturing okay so in here i think generally suddenly uh, ellaru female bidaga avag cut avu chance irti amale jerk kodidu antu helthu nam jolting in jerk kodidu amme suddenly break up indu thala so jerk kodidu antu adu avag cut avu chance irti amale several sports man they generally uh, running girls amale yavadu horse riding matte uh, avu what is that uh, cycling uh, in sports Say for example, female sports are there. Sports like like running, comma cycling, cycling, and uh, horse riding, horse riding. The female candidate, the male female, we, uh, which prefer which uh, are sportsmen like they participate in running. Cycling and horseback riding. Okay, so in these female candidates also, sometimes uh, the hymen will rupture out. Okay, sometimes the hymen will rupture out. Then it can also be ruptured uh, in uh, vaginal tantalum area. It can also be ruptured by the insertion of insertion of vaginal tampon which means say for example during menstrual cycle what happens the uh, this endometrium will rupture during menstrual cycle what happens this endometrium will rupture out which comes out through the cervical cavity in the form of blood and tissue a mass of tissue okay so generally in order to prevent that the female use pads sanitary pads okay so this vaginal tampon is a another device which soaks or which absorbs the vaginal flow okay vaginal tampon is a device is a device 
device which absorbs absorbs vaginal vaginal flow during menstrual cycle okay so why i am telling all this is because uh hymen rupture hymen rupture can be very very size okay you have to sexual intercourse or hymen rupture or other uh person if he is if the girl is sportsman running cycling horse riding the sports or participate mark the all hymen rupture can be and there uh, are time the menstrual cycle or the flow flow is that is prevent mark the device use mark vaginal or vaginal tampon so adu use madadu nindu hymen rupture aagu so this hymen rupture is a, uh, not the indication of virginity okay it is not the indication of or uh, simply right hymen rupture or i will write over here i will just give you this presence or absence of hymen or absence of hymen is not an indication indication of virginity okay so presence of this hymen kelo time na irutti cut agirutte automatically okay no it is not necessarily because of sexual intercourse sexual intercourse other is the hymen rupture avante illa okay so uh, the virginity virginity can not be assessed on the basis of presence or absence of hymen in the woman okay virginity virginity and uh, virginity here the virginity means they never had a sex never had had a sexual intercourse intercourse okay so presence or absence of hymen is not an indication of virginity virginity means the person the female never had a sexual intercourse other can you know virginity kanya antaru okay so that was uh, that part this is about the female reproductive system so in the next part we will try to understand the gametogenesis so that part we will try to understand in the next class so apart from that we have to study the mammary glands also that also we will try to understand in the next class thank you